Hey there, welcome to this selection and mask tools review. I've given you a document, PS Living Room Before .psd, and you'll notice here that this document is a multi layer document. We're going to double click and rename each of these layers. So here's the living room, here's the ESPN TV, here is an umbrella, and here is a vase. And what you'll see here is different than sometimes when we create documents. What I chose to do this time was to drag these items over and position them roughly where they're going to go. And then we're going to utilize the Select and Mask tool and the Selection tools to put them inside where they need to be. We're going to use Clipping Masks and Masks and Selection tools here. So I'm just going to kind of deal with this a little piece at a time first off. We'll start with the TV. So what we're going to do first is turn off the TV layer and mark the boundaries for the television itself. Now I'm going to zoom up closely. The television has a very, very thin inside piece. It's kind of hard to see, um, but when I'm zoomed up closely, I can sort of guess where it is. Now it's going to be very small in the picture. So this is an ideal polygonal lasso tool um, item because we have a lot of straight edges. So I'm going to set my polygonal lasso tool here. I'm going to click and kind of just create a border around the outside. Now I can kind of see it here on the bottom. So I'm going to start here in this bottom corner. So I'm going to click here. Now what we're doing is we're selecting the inside of the television area, which is where we're going to then put the ESPN picture. So you just click and let go and click and let go. And if we were wanting to make these perfectly straight, like 90 degree angle straight, we would hold down shift. I'm not going to worry about that on this instance because you'll see later on it's not going to really matter. Now, we selected that and that was on the living room layer because that's where the television is. But what we're going to do is hide that area so that we can see the TV. So notice now when I turn the TV layer on, we see the edges of the uh, selection. So I'm going to click on the TV layer and then add a layer mask. And that is going to hide everything except what's inside those marching ants. Here we go. And bam, there we go. And if I turn this on and off, you'll see we've got the outside edges of the TV and our little ESPN is right in there. Now, certainly optional, but you could lock this layer now that we're finished with it so you don't accidentally pick it up and scoot it around. Next up, I'm going to deal with the umbrella. So I'm going to take my hand tool. By the way, you can access the hand tool by pressing the space bar. Unfortunately, I am on a laptop with no mouse, and the hand tool does not work very well when you don't have a mouse. All right, uh, as far as holding space bar to do it. So I'm going to click on the umbrella layer. Now, this umbrella is on a solid white background. A solid white backgrounds are ideal candidates for the magic wand tool. Hopefully you were already thinking that. Uh, so I'm going to click and hold the quick selection tool and choose the magic wand tool. Now I can't give you 100% perfect numbers here, but the magic wand tool clicks based on a tolerance level. And you have to be careful because there are some edges here on this umbrella that could be light. And if this number is too high, then our magic wand will select part of the umbrella too. And we only want it to select the actual white background. I'm going to turn it down a little bit, let's say about 45 or 50, and click on the white area. Now what we're doing here is we are selecting the background, not the umbrella. That would be a problem right now because if we added a layer mask, this is what, what would happen. <laughs> Definitely not what we're going after, right? So I'm going to undo that. So what we need to do in this case is invert the selection or make it reversed. And we could do that here by simply right clicking and selecting the inverse. But what we're going to do instead is get into select mask because this lets us preview the selection. And right away we can see that, oops, we have this flip flopped. So in order to invert the selection, you're going to open up the global refinements if it's not open and click on invert. All right, that's going to flip it. Now, in case you're wondering what that red's all about, in case that's not what you have, I'm on overlay. So there's different views that you can be on. Onion skin would let you see the original layer. So the original layer was white, and I'm kind of seeing through it on onion skin based on this transparency. So if I turn this up, this is what it would look like um, if we added the mask right now. 
Um, you can also view it on black. And if I turn this up, then eventually it would turn black. Um, but probably most practical would be onion skin because that tells us what it's going to look like whenever we mask it out. And that looks pretty good. All right. And this number doesn't matter at all. This transparency is simply a view mode. It's just something we can look at. All right. So we've got it good to go. But what we need to do is to add a layer mask instead of hitting that button out there like we did before. We just tell it here, just put that on a layer mask. You hit OK. And bam, that takes care of it. However, we have some issues here. And that is it's not down in the basket. So easiest way to take care of that would be to paint it out. So I'm going to click on the layer mask. It should say layer mask here, and it does. You use either black or white, and you can reset the colors by pressing these little baby squares. And black would be used to hide. So if I want to hide, I will take my paintbrush, and I would just start painting over it. Now, you could do that, but it's going to be hard to paint right along this edge very carefully, right? I mean, this is fine for down here. So what I suggest a lot of times is to take your um, either your lasso or your polygon lasso. You could choose whatever lasso you wanted, really. Um, and then I'm going to take my polygon lasso and zoom up really close, like pixel level here. And I'm going to click right along the edges here. I'm creating an edge. Now, notice these aren't perfect. You can see pixels. So it's okay if this isn't perfect. So I'm just going to kind of click and click and click and click and click. And it doesn't have to be perfect because it, it's not a perfect edge. All right. Now, it doesn't really matter the shape I draw here because all this stuff is already in black. But I'm just going to click, click, click. And get kind of close to where you started and just double click and that seals it off now that doesn't do anything on its own but now if i take my black paintbrush and i paint it can only paint inside the marching ants so if i click here and i paint see how it only paints inside the marching ants so that i can't accidentally erase this top part here right it only is going to paint inside the marching ants now i'm going to press Control d get those marching ants to go away and voila, our umbrella now looks like it's in the basket. That is good times right there. Now, the next thing we're going to do is make the umbrella a different color. Um, so in my example, I make it blue. We're going to make it blue by adding an adjustment layer. That's this little moon's looking button. Create a new fill or adjustment layer. So make sure I'm on my umbrella layer and push the button. And then I'm going to modify the hue saturation because that's the easiest way just to change simple colors. Now this works well with this image because this image has blacks, whites, and pink. And black and white are unaffected by a hue saturation layer. So I'm going to go ahead and click it. Now here's the thing. When you do this, the properties box will come up, which allows you to modify the hue and saturation. But it's going to do it to the whole picture. Uh, obviously, I do not want my couch to turn blue. However, right now we're just looking at the umbrella. Okay, so now my umbrella is blue. I'm going to pull the saturation down so it's not quite such a bright blue. And I could even pull the color eyes or the, the lightness down here so it's not so bright. It's totally up to you on this. Now, in order for this to not do this to all the layers, we need the hue saturation layer to be pointing down to the umbrella layer. That's called a clipping mask. And in this properties box, all we have to do is push this button on the far left, which is used to um, clip to the layer. I think of it like paper clipping it to a layer. It will point down to it. I'm going to click it. Now notice what it's doing. It's only doing it to the layer that it's pointing to, which is the umbrella layer. Now I can still go in here and make these changes. And it's only going to do it to that layer, to that area that's selected. So I can decide what color I want, make adjustments if I want, and say that's what I want. So that looks good. All right, now time to deal with the vase. Let's turn that layer on. And zoom up, always zoom up, always very smart to zoom up on things. So there we are. I'm going to take my hand tool and position again. Again, you could just press space bar and do this. This one's a little more complicated. This is not going to select very well. The background is not solid, so it's not a good candidate for the magic wand. Um, and it's not got straight edges, so the polygonal lasso is a bad choice. A couple of things you could go with. You could use the magnetic lasso, which tries to stick to the edges. It's a really good choice for this one. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and control D here. I'm going to go ahead and choose the quick selection brush. So the quick selection, instead of going around things, is going to, you paint over things. So I'm going to paint over the vase. Now I've got my quick selection on plus, so that as I paint, 
it paints in more and that just went too crazy and here's why and click on the living room layer and not the vase so it's selecting something on the wall back there i'm going to press ctrl d to start over but this time i'm going to actually click on the vase layer all right here we go ah that's selecting much better now by the way that usually is what's wrong if you're trying to select and it doesn't seem to work remember click a little bit at a time here don't go crazy clicking because every time that you click you create a history state so every time I click, I create an undo point. So if I tried to do it all at once and it jumped too far and I went to undo, I'd undo everything. And then all the work I'd done would be for nothing, okay? All right, so this is not great, but it's gonna be fine for now. I'm gonna go into Select and Mask to preview the selection. Um, I'm gonna turn this on way up here so we can see what it looks like. So the edges are not perfectly good. Um, so what you can do now, and I like to put it on the red view, the overlay view, just kind of easier to see. Um, I'll got it on the red view. Now while we're in here, I'm gonna use this brush tool. So this brush paints in or out. We need kind of not a fuzzy edge here. So we don't want this to be super uh, soft. We wanna go on the harder side. So about 80, 84, 85, something like that. And I'm gonna add into selection. Now I can use a bigger brush. I'm pressing my bracket keys here to make it bigger. I'm gonna add into selection. Can't really tell much here, but it is growing a little bit here on the edges. Just trying to get that border a little bit, get rid of some of that fuzziness that's going on. Now, if it goes too far, no worries. We can always switch it to minus. So I'm just kind of adding in there, adding in here. And now I'm going to switch it to minus and come at it from the other direction. Kind of easier to minus out when you're trying to do these than it is to add in. There we go. So as we get this a little bit better, once we finally get it like we want, I want to get rid of this whole bottom part here. So I'm just going to paint this out and give myself a nice little base to my vase. And again, I am not using a mouse. This is really hard to do with a touch pad, but it's working out all right. Um, the selection tools are quite forgiving. All right, so let's say that's good enough there. Once you seem happy with it, again, you can go ahead and put this back on onion skin and go 100% and see what it's going to look like. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, and then again, we want to output this as a layer mask. Um, now, if you forget and you say selection and you hit OK, it's just going to do the marching ants. And you could go ahead and hit this button and add your layer mask. Um, either way, you can do it that way or you can do it this way. So once I choose layer mask, that's all good to go. And then if you still think there's problem areas, fun thing is you can go right back in here and double click on your mask and bring it right back into this selected mask. And then I can make changes to it from straight within here again, and it'll put it right back out on the layer mask. Okay. All right, it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna zoom out and take a look at it. Control zero to fit to screen. And I think we're looking pretty good. And I did make my vase more of a blue color. So we'll repeat that process like before, adding a hue saturation layer. Uh, remember, it's gonna do it to everything if we do not clip it in. So I'm gonna clip it down only pointing to the vase layer here and then as I move this around it will only do it to the vase there we go kind of some bluish colors there and again if I wanted to darken that up a little bit I could if I wanted to make it really blue I could go this direction um, however you want to go there is great all righty so these look pretty realistic you know I'm pretty proud of myself here um, but this is a good review of how to make adjustments and clip them in using clipping masks um, and then, of course, how to make selections and refine them with that select and mask tool. So your challenge would be to add something else to this picture, drag it in, then make your selection after you bring it in using these tools. Good luck and happy selecting.